Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, our little coffee break where we get together and bring new friends and, and guests to our show. So today we have Ann Latham, who is a resident of Hopkinton and a consultant with a book out called The Clarity Papers. So I, you know, we'll get into it, but I just want to say real quickly, I follow Anne on LinkedIn, and I'm just in love with this clear thinking process and, and uh, approach that you have to work in life. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's delightful to be yeah. here. Yeah. So tell us, we were just sort of talking about how we all met or when, you, when we met um, and so forth. But maybe we, let's talk a little bit about what brought you to Hopkinton. How long have you been here? Tell us a little well, bit about we, yeah. It's actually a pretty complicated story, but... I um, moved to Boston two years ago, okay. or, uh, three years ago, okay. because I'd lived in the country, I'd lived in the small towns, I'd lived in the suburbs, I'd never lived in the city. Okay. So I wanted to go right downtown, so we, we, stay, we lived for a year right downtown next to the public garden. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, it, was, nice. it, was it was just fantastic. That's we like called it our a gap year. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Nice. We called it our urban experiment. Okay, yeah. That's a good way to do it. I, got my, you know, I talked my husband into doing this. Mm -hmm. As long as it's one year, we'll do this. And it was like the best year of my life. Oh, wow. And it was oh, just yeah. fantastic. Oh, I'm surprised you, could only, you would want to do it longer. <laughs> well, you, you would think we'd want to do it longer because it was so much fun. But the canoe is in storage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your lifestyle changes. <laughs> we, and, we had no place, that, you know, that we didn't have parking with the apartment right, we rented. Yeah. And so it was, and there, there were a lot of sirens. But mm -hmm. it was a fabulous year, and the neat thing was is that I feel like Boston is now mine. Yeah. I mean, I went to school yeah. at Tufts University, oh, so okay. mm -hmm. I was familiar with the area. But living right downtown and walking everywhere oh, yeah. cool. and going out and exploring every afternoon was just mm -hmm. the best. Wow. So Boston was mine, and we needed to move on. And okay. so... We started looking everywhere, up and down, north, south, east, yeah. not east, west. <laughs> not much Swimming. East. <laughs> <laughs> right. The islands. Yeah. And trying to find a place that was either on the T or the commuter rail. Right. Yeah, right. And so this is why I ended up here, because it's on the commuter rail, and I want Excellent. Boston to yep. be that yeah. accessible. And I yeah. love being able to jump on the train. I can walk down to the train station cool. and go in and see clients in Boston. It's yeah, great. you can use your commute. <laughs> I haven't used the canoe much, but we're near Hopkinton State Park, so we have used the canoe there. Yeah, it was yeah. neat. As, um, Patricia takes like these trips into Boston for some of her clients, and then she'll just do walking for hours and post yeah. pictures and love it. And I had to go in a couple, I rarely go into the city, and I had to go in a couple times. And uh, once this summer, I had a few hours to kill, and I decided to do the whole public garden walk, spend a couple hours at the public library, and then head yeah. back to the State House. And as I was going through, there was this. Um, foundation of um, people for the public garden yes that do these like walking tours yes. so I walked with them and the whole, <laughs> yeah. no no I mean I, I start I went from the whole start of the tour but it was everything from the history on the ducklings to every statue to how different oh, bridges cool. and stones and you know to the family who you know runs the um, the well, uh, swan boats, swan yeah. boats. Yeah. and then it's the same family since the start so it was a very neat experience and they do that for free it's so, awesome. so, so you so had been your urban year, and now you've been here two years. How's it been? Yeah, what's I would say we're like? <clears throat> become more suburban, but suburban almost rural. Yes. Yeah, we thought we moved to the suburbs. Boy, no, are we no, wrong? No. no, it's rural more <laughs> it's than more than. It's really rural. Yeah. It's totally rural out right. here. <laughs> well, especially when you think about suburbs in other parts of the country. I'm from the Midwest, and suburban is, you know, sidewalks everywhere, and, you know, communities sprawling, and, yep. and you know, strip malls nearby. And we don't, you know, we're in the woods. I mean, we're literally in the woods. <laughs> right. It's very much in the woods. Oh, it, 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 it definitely well, there was a um, role yeah. player. It's not quite, it's not like you live in, in the middle, you know, uh, what it's they not call farm country rural. No, farm country rural. rural. But yeah. there are farms here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, so there was a couple weeks ago that there was like a thread going on the Real Housewives page that talked about, I, there was something about a ranking in Hawkington, and it fell a little bit lower than people thought, mm -hmm. and it became oh, okay. down because of not having any nightlife and things like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like night night night. <laughs> but I mean, in nightlife meaning almost like the, the definition when you went to the survey was a variety of restaurants and right. just things Discos, to do. It, it, bars. It, no, yeah. it didn't even mean that. That oh. wasn't part of the definition. It was actually like cultural events that, and so we have the you know the HCA, but there wasn't anything else like. A ballet or a theater oh. and things like that. That that they, the their criteria, criteria was more 
very, you know, culture and like a variety of diverse restaurants of different right. ethnic backgrounds. Yeah. Oh. So we're not quite there, but we, we can get there. Yeah. So you've well, been here two years. Yeah, we want to get there. Yeah, we want to <laughs> yes. get there. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about other things. So, I mean, when we met for coffee a year ago, you reminded me. I right. Mean, uh, do, you have, do you have kids in that? I have two daughters. Yeah. They're That's adults. Right. They, are, they were doing some international things. Tell well, one's a veterinarian, family. and yes. she, um, she's a veterinarian in London right now. Oh, cool. Wow. So we have a good excuse to go over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other one is an author. Okay. She wrote uh, a trilogy called The Song of the Ash Tree. Oh, wow. And it's a, it's a Norse-based fantasy trilogy, and it's really know. exciting. It's fun, fun stuff. And this is... Um, I like stuff like that. I'll have to good. I'll, find yeah, It's book. called The Song of the Ash Tree, and her, her pen name is T.L. Greylock. Oh, wow. That's even and creative. Well, where did she yeah. come up with that name? Well, she went to Williams College. And oh, 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 right oh, there. oh, oh, oh okay. And TL are her initials. Yeah. So. There you go. There and, you. and if she hears this, she'll probably go, that's all wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, how I, I look at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Trust so, me. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So two daughters grown. Yes. Often about. Wonderfully fledged. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and a little bit about what you do before we get into the book. So yeah. your career and what got you. Oh, you got man, you? it wouldn't yeah. be great if I could say, yeah, there's this clear path to oh, yeah. where I am. No, oh, 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 I No, never. It was, I grew up in Minnesota. I oh. sold minnows. I cleaned boats. I worked in car washes. I all because about I didn't want didn't a permanent job. I wanted, you yeah. know, seasonal labor. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. end because I didn't want to commit to anything that would destroy my fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> So then I, I, I ended up, my, I majored in mathematics, so at Tufts University mm -hmm. here, fell in love with Boston a long time ago, but um, ended up as a software engineer, mm -hmm. working at a variety of companies, high tech, oh, sure. you know, things that like machines, controlling machines that, that shake to simulate earthquakes to test okay. structures, or um, the same kind of machines, hydraulic machines that would uh, put wear and tear Just on artificial right. joints. Sure, sure. You know, Mechanical design. Stuff yeah. 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 So I worked there. I worked my way up the ranks through being not just a software engineer, but a software development yeah. manager. Then started realizing that I could apply my skills across not just software, you know, right. and take them wider. So I ended up working as um, reporting to the CEO and mm -hmm. Uh, running a lot of cross-functional, cross-divisional teams to really make improvements in the organization. So yeah. strategic and uh, efficiency related. Interesting. Well, no, what, so that, that makes sense in terms of the clear I, you know, way that you think about the morass of challenges and, and things that people do in organizations to get work done, teams and projects and various timelines and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, where I'm immersed in that in my organizational work. And your clear, well, what your uncommon clarity. Uncommon clarity is the name of my company. Right, right. And the, where that came from is before I left my corporate job, I asked all these people I worked with around me, and I said, what is it that I do exceedingly well that's most unusual? Okay. And I got all these great answers, but they boiled down to, okay, you take in large quantities of information and extract the nugget, the kernel, mm -hmm. or you bring focus to things so that we can make faster progress. And everything came down to uncommon down. clarity. Figuring well, out how to take a lot of information and make Well, yeah, in that aspect, <laughs> right. There's a lot of people, the way people work together, and the way they think, and right. the way they interact. I mean, just uh, scanning through this, and then having read some of your posts and seen some of your, your videos on LinkedIn. I mean, we had talked, and I knew broadly, but seeing it, um, was really like, wow, we're so glad to have you on this show to talk about that. And it was funny, you talked about your daughter having a, a pen name for her book. You don't. You put the, your, your, oh, yeah. your Anne Latham <laughs> on yours. Um, well, when you're self-employed, you have to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're trying to build your name. It's me. It's me. Right. Talk about, so you, you know, just without, speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask. Um, hold your thought. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't lose that thought. But uh, you do a lot of consulting work. You yes. work with a lot of corporations. And without naming names, protecting the innocent or not so innocent. Talk about some fun things or interesting things you've done with your profession, whether okay. or you've clarified some stuff for some yeah. Well, you know, the, the <laughs> cool folks. thing about it is that the clarity is something everyone needs. Yes. And pretty much any organization. So my clients represent 40 industries. Mm -hmm. Wow. They range from small nonprofits to large nonprofits like Smith College mm -hmm. to corporations like Hitachi and Medtronic and Boeing. Okay. So th the range is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what really makes it fun is the variety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys I, I, know that it's that you learn from every client you, you meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get to be exposed to all their different ideas 
So every every project is is it new and fun. I, I always say I do vicarious living because my clients are so diverse and so interesting, yeah. and I just, just like to throw. go wild and crazy. What but was your question? You do speaking engagements though too, right? Yes, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Were you at the like? Um, so where do, how do people find you and notice, like, have you come on? It's more of a motivational speaking or? No, it, well, it varies. I mean, let's see how many answers I can give at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so, so I do a lot of keynotes, but I tend, I try to make them really targeted to mm -hmm. what the person, the you audience. know, the, the yeah. audience needs. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just motivational, it's usually changing their perceptions giving them concrete things that they can run with to improve their business or their lives. But I, it ends up being pretty diverse because I've spoken to groups that are uh, full of parents. I mean, they're like at chamber events. They're, not yeah. all, in, they're all in different kinds of, of, right. of businesses and organizations. So then I might end up talking to them about dealing with teenagers. You know? yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, then what if I have a corporate audience, then it's much more hardcore about how you can get things done faster and better. Right, right, right. Well, I love your, what you talked about in terms of decision making. Now, you know, we know in any sort of system there's multi levels of decisions, and some people think they have the right to decide about this or that, and then they don't, or some people have not been in the loop. I just love how you bring that all together and give people a process, a step by step sort of way of thinking about the dynamic to clarify what's well, happening. And the process is what's so important. And, and establishing that process is what gets everyone on the same page. Yeah. Because when you think about it, first of all, we make decisions like hundreds and hundreds of times a day. Mm -hmm. And some of them are real easy. You don't think about them like, should I get out of bed this morning? <laughs> but you know, drink some of them are pretty coffee. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, should I drink the coffee now or later? Another cup? Yeah. So there's a lot of trivial ones. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of important ones. And we don't treat them as a process. Mm -hmm. We get a bunch of people in the room. And we start throwing out ideas, and there's the pros and cons, and you go around in circles, and you wonder why you're back at zero, mm -hmm. ground zero, and you've gotten nowhere, and you you don't reach agreement, or you reach agreement only after everyone's so tired of arguing that right. they give up. Yeah. yeah. So the truth is, is that create developing a making a decision is a four-step process. Yeah. Oh, okay. Four steps. Okay. There's four steps, okay. and I, I use the acronym SOAR, SOAR through decisions. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So the oh, first step I is is a statement. State what the decision is. Mm -hmm. um, second step is objectives. Third is alternatives, and the last is the risks. Okay. okay. So the first one is just be sure you're all making the same decision. Mm -hmm. Have you ever walked into the room and said something like, well, I'm thinking of buying a new car? Mm -hmm. And people start reacting, right? What do they say? Yeah, oh, well, you should get this or that. You should get this or that. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to lease or are you going to buy? Um, or what color? What color? <laughs> are you going to use it for commuting? You know, so yeah. But mostly then people start throwing out ideas about, "Oh, get a Prius or, you know, no, get a Tesla." You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. yep. But the third step is alternatives. And mm -hmm. that's where everyone goes first. Okay. Step 3. Oh. So, so almost every decision is part of a series of cascading decisions. And mm -hmm. if you bring people to the first decision, have you actually decided to buy a car? Mm -hmm. Which car are you going to replace? Mm -hmm. Are you going to buy so or lease? Building the objectives around. I mean, and I, I'm listening to you and going, I think I do that naturally, but I never thought of it in those pieces. Mm -hmm. So the statement, then creating the objectives the around objectives. that decision statement. Well, how will you know a good alternative when you see one? Mm. How do you measure? What are the decision criteria? So the alternatives aren't the options of this yeah, color car or options. that. Oh, they yes. are. Okay. It almost seems like a brainstorming, and that's, yes. I, that's immediately where I go. Yeah. It's like oh, alternatives like, first. I, I, I immediately go there, and I think that's the ADD in me and mm. stuff like that. But <laughs> immediately I just go into those buckets, and I'm thinking of things that have happened at work lately and stuff mm. like that, that these are the things that like, well, we could do this, we could do this, we could do that. But like, all right, what's, what's our end goal? But so the, yeah, so the, so. The, the, the statement is really the clarity around what is the decision we need to make. Right. Is that what you mean? Because what typically mean? you'll find, like, I, w I was sitting in an, ex an um, executive team meeting, and I wasn't supposed to be talking because mm -hmm. it wasn't my turn yet. Yeah. So I'm just sitting there listening, and I'm going nuts because you I finally interrupt. Crazy, and everybody's said, jumping over like, you know, and, and they're very focused. They're mm -hmm. very diligent. These are very serious, determined mm -hmm. people. And I finally said, stop. Do you realize you're talking about five different decisions and two different plans? Okay. And they, they just 
just dagger eyed, you know. Okay. Who are you to say that? Yeah. So I said, well, wait a minute, there's five there. different decisions here, mm -hmm. two different plans, and I enumerate them, and you see the lights go on, yeah. and they, oh my God, you're right. And furthermore, once they see there are five different decisions, it's obvious what order you should Work address each yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And so instead of a conversation that would have taken up the entire hour yeah. and required another meeting, right. instead they chunked through them, and 15 minutes later we were done and on to the next thing. Yeah. And well, it's I just got a client for break you. It down. Yeah, but you want that second meeting because those are billable hours. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, that's a good point because I refuse to charge by the hour because. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. So I you think do by it, project? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because. It, to me, it's almost unethical because I shouldn't be rewarded for being slow. Right. Well, <laughs> I or, want, or, or, or they should be punished for being slow. Well, and, <laughs> and my clients all want speed, too. Yes. So I want speed. They want speed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to charge by the yeah. hour. I the don't either because it's like outcome. Statement. Theory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Outcome. Objectives. Objectives. So the decision criteria. What yeah. are you trying to accomplish and what are limitations? Mm -hmm. Alternatives, and those are the obvious ones because yeah, right. that's what everyone does. Just, yeah, okay. they, well, and then the and the last one is risks. Risk. And okay, tell us what you mean in terms so of how that fits once in you've your once you you've taken your <coughs> and, and chosen the alternative that best aligns with your objectives, mm -hmm. then you should pause and go, what could go wrong? Mm. What or the could cost go benefit wrong? analysis, you know, is is the risk worth the reward? Well, that's always when you're yeah. Anytime you're dealing with risk, it's like. Can we mitigate that risk? Can we eliminate that risk? But like you start with what can we live with that risk? Yeah, well, what can go wrong? Just yeah. pause. Just bring I mean, on that. <laughs> let's take the um, the Win Casino fiasco. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So they made a decision in selecting Win Resorts mm -hmm. yeah. and to build this casino, and now they're on hold. They get this hulking thing growing up on the Mystic River, and they're stuck. And the Gaming Commission will tell you, oh yeah, we knew that you know it was important that we choose someone with. You know, complete integrity, high character. Everyone knows that the gaming, gambling industry is not the squeaky cleanest right. industry right. around. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, that was, you know, that was a part of our criteria. criteria. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I guarantee you they got in a room and they started, they had that little conversation about those criteria, but they didn't pay attention that much. And then they get into weighing the pros and cons right. of the proposals before them. Yeah. And people are going, oh, Bellagio East. Oh, this would be so cool. Can you imagine yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. And they get caught up in it, and they haven't gone back to weigh those against the original criteria because they modeled, you know, conflate yes, all yeah. the steps of the, the process into one, whereas the reality is if you do it one step at a time, yes. and then at the end you pause and say, okay, now what could go wrong? Yeah. Wow. And I will tell you, my background being public accounting, risk is always a part of our um, evaluation model. But, I, you know... I, I'm going, it's dumb luck, though, um, that I think most of the time I go through that sequence. Um, and, and, you know, I'm always a person who says we should make active decisions, not passive decisions. Um, and to hear it stated so, so clearly. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> the clarity um, <laughs> is very interesting. Yeah. We'll take another example. The Wells Fargo, where they tried mm -hmm. to get people to increase the number of accounts, you know, yeah. no matter what. What could go wrong? They should have stopped and said, what could go wrong? Right. Oh. They should have stopped it. What decisions are we making here about Well, they could have. They should, yeah, back <laughs> right. up the train. Back up but the mostly, train. you know, everyone goes to that step three. And if you skip the first two steps, yeah. you know, if you, if you can't agree on objectives, you will mm -hmm. never agree on alternatives. You will never agree as a group on a decision. And then you can't evaluate So within this book, do you right. talk about those things? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. So yeah. is this your first book? I have three little booklets that are uh, been around for years. Um, this is my first full-length book. But what this book really does is try to explain what clarity really is, because people don't really know what clarity is. I love that. Why is it important, and what can you do to increase clarity? clarity so I'm on for a meetings. mission to increase right. clarity. Right. I mean, many of my organizations, I mean, they're meetings, meetings, and um, mm. this is the really reason your for the meeting. Sweet Everyone, spot. Yeah. Should you have a meeting? How to have a meeting? You know, um, what to, you know. I, I'm just, just thumbing through this. Is yeah, amazing. there's a lot of material on meetings. Stuff. And you know what's funny about meetings is that people, people know that I care about meetings, so they will come to me and say, oh, man, I just went to a great meeting. Okay. Yeah. Go, well, what made it great? Mm -hmm. And they go, well, the topic was at least mildly interesting. Mm -hmm. Everyone stayed focused on the topic, mm -hmm. and everyone was well-behaved. Well mm -hmm. No one dominated. No one. Yeah. And I'm going, that okay. doesn't make That's a great it, yeah. meeting. Did, were there any outcomes? 
Did anyone conclude anything? Was, was a decision made? Was, mm -hmm. was the problem resolved? So the bar for meetings is about this low. Mm -hmm. well, if all it has to be is, is I had to generally interesting, yeah. focused, and people are civil. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. a really low bar. That should be, I know. That should be a given. But, you know, without those things, you know, it really derails. You know, people are comfortable. I mean, I'm not saying, I think you're right. I mean, obviously, outcomes are important. But I think those baseline things. Yeah, but that's how bad yeah, but, things have gone. But that's, that's the, the problem is, and, and when you think of all the advice you read and you've heard about meetings, mm -hmm. it's all about controlling people. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, let's, let's lock the doors if they're not here on time. Yeah. Let's uh -huh. have a timekeeper who's, you know, monitoring how we're wasting our time. Right, right. We've, let's have a note keep, keep, keeper who's, you know, taking minutes and writing down all the okay. wandering conversation. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that people are not out of control. They right. go to meetings eager to get something done, right. and the absolute biggest problem is not any of the rules you hear about, but the lack of clarity about what needs to be different when you're done. Right. Mm -hmm. And you should never start a meeting if you don't know what concrete thing are you walking out with that you didn't have coming in. Mm -hmm. I'm working on within a small nonprofit now, and part of it is helping them restructure some things, and they wanted to have a meeting on Tuesday. And I'm like, well, do you have an agenda? And she goes, well, everyone will just talk about what's going on. I'm like, why, though? So why are we meeting? Well, I can say this and I can say that. And then it turned into, like, you know, a pat on the back and, like, like a, 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 a pep rally. Yeah. And then meeting afterwards, it's Tuesday I, like, morning. I went to my office and closed the door, and she came in. She goes, you seem upset. I said, because I just spent two hours of my life. I'll never get back because nothing yes. was accomplished. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was the same things being said over and over again. You need to give this gift. Uh, bring to your office and you, you can share some ideas with them. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's... So, you know, and, and one of the rules, I mean, back, I think, probably in the 90s, people started saying, well, you have to have an agenda. You have to have an agenda. So I hate to tell you, but the only thing that accomplished was the proliferation of really bad agendas. Agendas. There, you know, yeah. it, it's a recipes for wasting time. Absolutely. 8 to 8.30, let's waste time on this. <laughs> now it's 8.30. It doesn't matter if we finished anything, but it's 8.30 at 8.45, so now we'll waste time on the next topic. But we'll even just to have topics for agenda, saying, hey, listen, I want to talk about these three things today, Yeah. yeah. and these three people are going to do well, it. Well, again, yeah. it's a statement. Start with a statement. But most this of those topics on an agenda. <laughs> this is, no, I, I, mine's a little time because there's some other things oh, yeah. to be sure we talk about the <laughs> This so, is so rich. So the you can see how we're... How we're but yeah. how do, one, I know if you want to follow Anne, that her Twitter handle is at Ann Latham, and it's Ann with no E. Yeah. Um, on book. Twitter, um, <laughs> she's posted up some really neat, almost daily tweets. I mean, one that got me the other day was about, you know, kind of squishing down productivity with, a work, with your workforce and not mm -hmm. helping them with their vision. But um, where can they get your book? Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Right. The Clarity Papers. That's and when, it. when did it get published? Uh, January 18th. Yay! Oh, Yay. You're oh, not even a month. brand new. Fast oh. off the press. This is a Hopping in Residence book, and it's been out less than a month. Yeah. Awesome. So check it out. And um, so I have some stuff going on in the community. Um, I had some of the shout outs. We actually had a, um, at a forum last Saturday that was about the center school reuse, and it was the first public forum, and kind of getting the feedback. And I sit on that committee, and it makes me want to have Ann come to one of our <laughs> meetings because we're funneling now over 300 surveys of people's feedback and seeing where things are going. Mm -hmm. But um, that was that was interesting. We're you know getting into you know a local election year, things going on. Um, obviously, you see a purple ribbon on our table, and that's for a young child that's um, in our community named Leah. Uh, the ribbons can be bought at um, the two platinum um, PT. Um, Physical, physical therapy. Therapies. Yeah. Uh, one is on Lumber Street in Hopkinton or by Zen um, Nail Salon, and the other one's in Ashland. Or you can contact Heather Smith um, in town, and she has them on her front porch. If you're wondering, it's a, know, um, these, these yeah. are mailboxes and these purple Yeah, so these are, are being displayed all over the community um, in honor of a little girl named Leah that's struggling um, very severely with cancer. Her family's uh, now um, in a trial in Georgia. And how old is Leah? Five and a half. Five and a half years old. So, um, they're fifteen dollars a piece. Yeah. People are displaying them, and um, it's helping offset some of the costs the family's incurring right now with yeah. being um, away and, relocate to and stuff like that. The the, and yeah. um, the um, tomorrow is also a, a whole day of prayer vigils. And if you go to there's a Love for Leah page, and uh, you can sign up for these fifteen minutes windows um, for you know just a time to think and pray and focus on the, yeah. the Davis family and their needs. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's the jitterbugs coming up at HCA. Um, so that's party or performance? It, that's, a, that's a youth performance coming <laughs> up. So if you go to the HCA's website, their dates are up there. And I know that we'll talk about this again next week, but um, there are a couple um, events coming up. The Furball for um, Bay Path is at the end of March. Um, Live, Live for, for Evan it. has their event coming up. And Early March? March. Or it, more, Early. I think it's March 4th, but it yeah, might be. It, but it's um, a red tie event, and they're hosting that in Milford. Mm -hmm. And so I red think tie. it's, it's um, spring gala yep. season, and the other one that will be coming up is the HEF gala. And yeah. if you, um, I think the deadline for... Um, for no um, tickets, tickets for early bird tickets is actually at the um, end of this week. So, um, and that, actually, Heather Smith is another one to contact about that. So, there's a lot going on um, and a lot more, you know, upcoming that we'll be able to talk. So, about. there's two things happening next week: yep. Valentine's Day, Day. That's the heart. I've got the heart. Yes. And I bet you guys didn't know this. Mm. Next year is the Lunar New Year, Year of the Dog. <laughs> Oh, did you know? Oh, it's just going to go wild. So, <laughs> <laughs> with all the dog lovers. Well, let's I, not talk about dogs but, right now. But I think we're over time, so, you know, yeah. and thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, and, it's uh, been a lot of fun. You know, it's a pleasure. Uh, please Absolutely. support the um, Love for Leah ribbon thing. They, the family really needs it and really needs, like, your good thoughts and prayers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for joining us, Anne. Good to chat. Yep. Cheers. 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 find yourself feeling down in winter or if you experience depression through the year does it get worse in the colder and darker months I'm here to tell you about winter depression and what you can do that may be helpful seasonal affective disorder or sad is a type of depression that tends to occur in the fall you may lose your energy and motivation you may feel sluggish agitated distracted hopeless and you may have problems with sleeping your appetite or suicidal thoughts sad can lead to social withdrawal problems with school or work, and substance abuse. Here's the good news. You can talk with your primary care physician, your psychiatrist, or mental health professional. There are effective treatments such as counseling, light box therapy, or medication. Sometimes we feel bad in the fall and winter anyway, especially during the holidays. But if a mood slump continues for days or weeks, don't wait. Talk with your doctor or counselor for more information and support. My son had a drinking problem at college. I'm glad a friend suggested Al-Anon Family Groups. Is someone's drinking troubling you? You might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon Family Group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org.